Hi and welcome back. In this part of chapter, I'll be talking about some major crops like rice, like wheat, like cotton, like maize. And I'll be talking about the important conditions that are required for the growth of each of these crops. So let's get started. I had already told you once in the previous part of the chapter that for the growth, for the healthy growth of a particular crop, uh, it, it requires adequate amount of sunlight. Okay, temperature. The temperature could be high, could be moderate, could be low. Rainfall. Rainfall could also be high, moderate, low. Humidity. Okay, then the soil, the texture of the soil, the nutrients that are there in the soil, the property of the soil, whether the soil is uh, able to absorb a lot of moisture okay like an alluvial soil or whether it is non-porous like in sandy soil okay so all of these conditions are required for the growth of each particular crop the conditions that are required for the growth of rice is very very different than the conditions that are required to grow coffee for example okay so uh, while talking about the growth of each crop it is very essential that we understand the important uh, conditions that uh, i had mentioned before um, that are there okay involved and all of these conditions should be there in at least the optimum quantity all right so let's get started the first major crop that we're talking about is rice all right rice needs alluvial soil for its uh, growth for its cultivation because alluvial soil is able to retain large amount of moisture right and the kind of so this is the soil that we're talking about the next we're talking about is temperature okay and uh, the amount of water uh, that this particular crop needs whether it needs high amount of water low amount of water and water i'll be telling uh, i'll be uh, you know uh, relating the amount of water in relation to rainfall so heavy rainfall low rainfall and humidity now that could also be understood in context of water right so the kind of soil that uh, rice needs for its cultivation is alluvial soil okay the temperature should be high to moderate and it needs heavy rainfall so uh, the water the need of water is heavy so it ne uh, need of water is plenty so it needs heavy rainfall all right so uh, can you can you recall uh, a particular area where there is moderate to high temperature and heavy rainfall it is actually the tropical areas right because the tropical areas and uh, not just the tropical but also subtropical regions they have high to moderate temperatures and they have adequate amount of rainfall if not heavy then at least adequate amount of rainfall and since rice or paddy needs a lot of water for its cultivation so up an, an area where there is a moderate to heavy rainfall is actually preferred and the uh, texture of the soil should be low uh, it should be alluvial sorry and it should uh, since alluvial soil uh, they are found in the northernmost part of india in the plains in the ganges plains right so in the northern area uh, rice is cultivated in in a lot of uh, quantity right then also china china is the leading producer of rice then it is followed by india in japan in sri lanka so mostly asian countries okay when talking about wheat uh, we have to uh, consider that the kind of soil that wheat needs is loamy okay black soil all right black soil is favorable for uh, wheat okay then the temperature that it needs it's moderate not so high rather moderate then the amount of water uh, that um, um, wheat needs is also moderate okay so temperature and i have no space so i am going to write over here temperature and water uh, content that uh, wheat needs for its growth is also moderate all right and one thing that you have to remember is that uh, during the time of harvesting uh, a plenty of uh, not a plenty during the time of harvesting adequate amount of sunshine should be there okay so there should be plenty of uh, sunshine so that uh, the 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 you, you can say um the grown crops or the ripened uh, crops of the wheat plant they are actually uh, you know good in quality all right and uh, since all of these conditions uh, should be reminding you of temperate grasslands okay because in temperate areas you get 
moderate rainfall, moderate sunlight or moderate temperature and also it, it can be ensured that during the time of harvest uh, we would be getting a moderate enough sunshine. All right. So in areas of USA, Canada, India, Argentina, Russia, Australia, wheat is grown in uh, uh, huge quantities. All right. Next uh, crop that we'll be talking about is millets. Millets is also known as coarse grain. Okay. The kind of soil that these coarse grains uh, requires is uh, sandy soil. So since sandy soil is not so fertile, and it is, uh, you know, porous, uh, non-porous in nature. Uh, sorry, porous in nature. Okay. So, um, sandy soil, uh, from sandy soil, we can thus, you can say, uh, conclude that the fertility rate or the fertility, you can say, extent uh, that millets require for the growth is actually low. So, low, uh, of low fertile soil is required for the growth of millets. All right. Uh, then when talking about the content of water, then uh, there should be low rainfall because sandy soil, it cannot absorb uh, enough water. So there should be a low rainfall and the temperature should be high to moderate. Okay. The different kind of millets that are grown in India, since India is also a leading producer of millets, uh, they are Jowar, Bajra and Ragi. You must have heard of these names. These are the different kinds of millets that are grown in India and the conditions required others mentioned. Uh, sandy soil, it's a low fertile soil, uh, the amount of water should be low, rainfall should be low because sandy soil can absorb a lot of water. The temperature, sh temperature should be high to moderate and the important areas that are uh, that grow millets are India, Nigeria, China and Niger. And then when talking about maize, maize the common term of maize is also corn and there are different varieties of corn, right? So, the temperature. Maize requires moderate temperature and also uh, rain or the water uh, quantity is also moderate, alright? And the one, one thing that maize requires in huge quantity or in huge amount, in plenty amount is sunshine. So, the amount of sunshine for the growth of corn or for the growth of maize should be high, all right. And uh, the soil, there is no uh, one specific reference of soil, but whatever soil should be should be there in moderate areas with moderate rainfall. Okay, it it should be uh, well, it should be fertile enough, and it should be well drained. So there should not be any stagnation of water, therefore well drained, and it should be fertile enough, all right. And the leading producers, the countries that are the leading producers of maize. They are uh, Brazil, China, India, Russia, Canada, and Mexico. Okay. Next, we'll be talking about cotton. Cotton, if you may remember, uh, cotton is often grown in plantations, all right, in large expanses of land where a huge amount of labor is employed. All right. The leading producers of cotton are China, India, USA, Egypt, Pakistan, and Brazil. Cotton needs high temperature as well as high rainfall so both of these conditions of rain and or rain or water or uh, temperature is high all right and there is one specific condition that is required for the growth of cotton that cotton needs 210 frost free days all right so there should be no frost 210 frost free days are required for the fluffy cotton balls that can be then you know uh, uh, taken up into bales and used for processing and uh, other activities all right uh, there should be also enough sunshine so plenty of uh, bright or uh, bright plenty sunshine all right and next the kind of since since uh, uh, since cotton needs high temperature and also cotton need uh, also it needs high amount of water or high amount of rainfall so you may understand this that the soil that is perfect for growing of cotton is alluvial and not just alluvial but also black black soil is generally preferred than alluvial all right because uh, black cotton soil you must have heard of this phrase okay uh, the reason i've written alluvial is that alluvial soil thrives on in, in area where there is high rain all right and even though you don't have high rain but you have large quantity of water 
okay then also you can grow cotton and uh, a black soil is uh, is the best suited soil for the growth of cotton next is jute and jute is also known as golden fiber all right because it is the strongest fiber um, and there are there are a lot of commercial uses of jute okay india and bangladesh they are the major producers of jute and uh, jute is also grown in alluvial soil so uh, mostly the temperature or the water content that jute needs is almost almost similar to cotton it it needs high temperature okay and it needs heavy rain so the ca a kind of humidity that would be there is also would also be high right so high temperature high rain high humid quantity um, okay cotton also needs all of these and alluvial soil is more suited for jute cotton would also grow well in alluvial soil but the best soil for cotton you have to remember this is black soil and uh, since black soil is found in the deccan area of india okay so cotton is uh, grown uh, in, in in huge quantities in that area and that deccan plateau and lastly I'm talking about uh, two other plantation uh, crops that are coffee and tea so both these uh, plants coffee plants and tea plants they are grown on hill slopes so again if you may remember of the terrace farming that i had discussed with you in the previous chapter so they are uh, the the hills they occur into terraces into slopes and on these slopes the, uh, huge plantations of coffee and tea are there so there is labor there has to be labor a lot of labor there has to be uh, a lot of capital to ensure that the plantation is well working and for uh, the growth of uh, uh, you, for, for the growth of very uh, you can say exotic or very perfect coffee beans the kind of climate that is required is warm uh, and wet climate all right so there has to be enough sunshine there has to be moderate temperature but there has to be also a moderate amount of rainfall all right and the kind of soil that coffee thrives on is well drained so there has to be no uh, uh, you can say um, there has to be no water logging so the soil should be well drained and often loamy soil is uh, preferred for coffee then for tea also uh, you need uh, you need a warm climate okay uh, sorry you need uh, water not not uh, temperature uh, uh, water okay so for tea also you need a uh, moderate rainfall all right but this moderate rainfall should be well distributed throughout the year so there uh, there are regions where there is moderate or heavy rainfall in just particular seasons right but tea thrives uh, in those area where there is moderate rainfall scattered or distributed throughout the year and the kind of temperature that tea requires is cool climate not warm i'm sorry the kind of uh, temperature that coffee requires is warm and it also requires rainfall right so warm and wet climate but the kind of temperature that tea requires for its growth is cool climate and uh, since it it thrives well in areas where there is uh, an adequate distribution of rainfall throughout the year so from that we can you know actually logically infer that the kind of temperature the kind of climate that tea would require for its growth would be cool all right so a uh, cool climate moderate rainfall and uh, the soil texture would be the same it uh, tea also grows well on well drained loamy soil all right and the important uh, the you can say the leading producers of coffee they are brazil colombia and india and the leading producers of tea they are kenya india china and sri lanka so these are the conditions uh, that are required for the growth of each of these individual crops and we have talked about the soil texture and we have talked about the the climate conditions in climate conditions you have talked about temperature and rainfall and the amount of uh, humidity that is required you can actually infer it from the amount of rainfall all right so next we will be talking about agricultural development means we will be talking about the important steps that we can take uh, in order to ensure that each and every one of us is having an access to safe healthy nutritious food all right um that we will be discussing in the next part of the chapter